Ignore the election. Larkin Rose. These days, you can hear or read all manner of rantings about how we simply must prevent an Obama presidency or how we simply must prevent a McCain presidency, depending on who is doing the ranting. And lots of people have lots of bad things to say, most of them true, about the candidate they hate the most. But what they fail to see is that, having accepted the cult of democracy as legitimate, 99% of those whining about how bad one candidate is are then stuck in supporting someone else who is just as bad. They are so indoctrinated into the mindset of slaves that the only choice they can even comprehend is, which slave master do we want? They are incapable of backing up and saying, who says I have to support either of these psychotic jackasses? Oddly, these same people then project their own stupidity onto people like me who actually want freedom. If I point out that Obama is a nationalist socialist, they say, so you like McCain? And if I point out that McCain is a nationalist socialist, they say, so you're a Democrat? Better yet, they rely on the ever popular, if you don't vote, you can't complain. When the choices are Hitler and Stalin, the ones who don't vote are the only ones who do have the right to complain. And yet, the American peasants continue to be vehemently partisan, one group insisting that we should be the slaves of Obama, and one insisting that we should be the slaves of McCain. If you suggest that we shouldn't be the slaves of either one, most Americans will be unable to even comprehend the concept. Let me make this perfectly clear. The outcome of the upcoming presidential election does not matter. Not in the slightest. Either way, a collectivist National Socialist is going to win and is going to advocate more power for government and less freedom for you and me. You might as well have a national debate on what species the first dog should be, for all the difference it'll make. Whichever lying crook you defeat, his identical twin will gain power. If only King George III had understood the trick, we'd still be under British rule. All he needed was some other control freak doofus like himself to run against in an election. Then the colonists would have been so distracted over the pointless debate over which aspiring tyrant was worse, it never would have occurred to them to tell both would-be tyrants to get lost. If you want to get bummed out, do a little research and find out the level of oppression, taxation, and regulation that was inflicted upon the colonies by King George III, which triggered a revolution, and then compare it to the level of oppression, taxation, and regulation that today is inflicted upon us by Emperor George Bush. How did our glorious and noble revolution end up making things so much worse for us? Simple. Democracy is the best tyrant scam in history. It gives the illusion that the people have power and so keeps them perpetually wasting their time and effort on things that have never and will never achieve freedom instead of doing anything that might work. And 99% of Americans worship democracy as if it is the ultimate salvation. And they continue in that goofy belief, even when they admit that they really aren't happy with the politicians they have to choose from. Ironically, in one way, the candidates being as bad as they are helps the tyrant trick. Plenty of people say, well, as bad as Barack Obama is, we just have to defeat him. And of course, that implies supporting his identical twin, John McCain. And on the other side, people are insisting that McCain and his fellow neocon crooks must be stopped at all costs. And that, of course, means supporting Obama. People are so determined to vote against the guy they're scared of, they hardly notice who they're voting for. Someone just as bad. In fact, someone exactly the same. My advice? For starters, don't vote. Don't legitimize your own enslavement by agreeing that anyone should rule you. Secondly, completely ignore the election. Turn off the TV and the radio. The election means nothing. It is a show designed entirely to keep you distracted and to keep you thinking and doing things, like voting, which will never achieve freedom for you or anyone else. Trouble is, people are so indoctrinated into the democracy worship, if I tell them not to vote, they respond with, so I should do nothing? This implies that voting is the only thing us peasants could ever do about the situation, an idea which is, of course, trained into the peasants by the tyrant's propaganda. Now for the punchline. For 99% of people, the political problem is not an external one. The politicians are not the problem. Your belief in the system and in their laws, and in your belief that government has the right to impose upon you or any arbitrary command it wishes, is the problem. You view yourself as a slave, beholden to your masters, and believe that your overriding obligation is to obey politicians' scribbles. Laws. 
As long as you believe that, why shouldn't the megalomaniacs fight over who gets to enslave you? If the only question is which master you should have, then you're doomed either way. If, on the other hand, you start to entertain the radical extreme idea that you aren't the property of the Republican crooks or the Democrat crooks, you might start to see new possibilities for freedom.